Um, thank you guys for coming. And I'm going to make an announcement first. I'm also the head of the clinical service for production animals at University of Queensland, and we are currently seeking two veterinarians. So if you know or are somebody that's looking to re relocate to Queensland, we have one position for a more senior, uh, more experienced uh, veterinarian, and also one position for um, somebody that's newer in their career, so a little bit more of a junior position, but um, both really good positions. So please spread the word. We're looking for good vets. So, um, so I'm going to be talking about um, an unusual condition in cattle. Um, the only first time that I've seen it, uh, bovine familial convulsions and ataxia, and this has not been reported in Australia before. There's been a report of convulsions and ataxia in cattle, but it wasn't um, familial related, so this, um, it hasn't been reported in um, the country of Australia before. So a little bit of background, it is a heritable condition. Um, it's been reported in a variety of cattle and crossbred cattle as well. Um, it's been reported quite a while ago, um, first in 1968, and what it is is it's an autosomal dominant in, um, condition with incomplete penetrance of typically 20 to 30 percent. Um, cerebellar abiotrophy is the hallmark finding of this condition, and what the abiotrophy is is it's premature degeneration or aging of certain tissues, and the degeneration is um, an intrinsic abnormality as opposed to an external insult. I, the calves are typically born normal, so as opposed to cerebellar hypoplasia that we might see in BVD. And we can have a variety of clinical signs, but those clinical signs are all really all to do with the cerebellum, um, the abnormal abnormality of the cerebellum, so rate range in motion, so they have really exaggerated movements, um, they can have ataxia, wide base stance, and uh, head tremors. And they can also have recurrent seizures and convulsions. Usually these are during periods of time of stress, they can be a few minutes up to many hours, um, and can range in severity uh, quite significantly as well. And due to this ataxia and the abnormalities of the cerebellum, they're prone to injuries and aspiration because they might um, fall down in the water and not be able to get up and drown themselves. So with that background, this is the case series that um, I got presented to me. Um, it was a property in Southeast Queensland with about 200 calves born on that property and a recently acquired uh, Black Angus bull, sired 19 of the calves. And the unfortunate thing is that the owner did not call a veterinarian until he decided that it was the problem with the bull, and he was correct, but he sold the bull to the abattoir, so I didn't get to have any material from him. Um, but he was the only black bull on the property, um, so everything that had um, that was sired from him was easily identified because the black is the dominant gene. So in, in this study, there was a much higher percentage of the animals that were abnormal, 17 out of the 19. Um, so that's much higher penetrance than has been previously reported. The dam breeds, this guy kind of had what we call a rainbow herd. He had a little bit of everything. Um, there was even a milking shorthorn in there um, that had an abnormal calf. So a wide variety of uh, females represented as well. And they were all multi parous cows and they had had normal calves in the past. Um, and two of the affected calves moved to different paddocks at mid-gestation, so there were also different paddocks involved. Um, and looking through the paddocks, didn't find any uh, toxic plants or any potential toxins that could have led to this condition. Uh, the reported signs were ataxia, intermittent convulsions, um, from a few minutes all the way up to eight hours. And unfortunately, due to size restrictions of the PowerPoint, I wasn't able to put a video in here. but. Um, essentially, they, it was really exaggerated movements. They were able to navigate their environment, um, but so they weren't blind, but they just had really exaggerated movements and wide based stances. And it usually became worse at times of stress. So if you were just to see them out in the paddock, they'd be fairly normal, but if you try to move them into the yards, then the issues would be exaggerated quite a bit. Uh, six of the seven calves died, uh, four were dr four drowned, 
and one got stuck in the mud and the owner didn't find it quick enough. Uh, one had complications with diarrhea, so likely unrelated. And two calves were euthanized for humane reasons. They were injuring themselves too significantly, one by the owner and one by myself that uh, I performed the full necropsy on that one and collected the brain. Uh, three uh, brains were harvested at the abattoir. Um, he wanted to salvage as much as he could to salvage the, the meat. And then the, the rest he has uh, kept. So the age of onset for this series was quite varied uh, from a few days to uh, two months, but the majority were two to three weeks that uh, the owner first noted any, anything abnormal with these calves. And one interesting thing is that they were quite well muscled. They were um, very well muscled, uh, more so than that we would appreciate, even with the milking shorthorn. So my initial visit, um, I first got out there um, and was only able to examine eight of the calves. The calves were ranged from two to four and a half months, and they did have a ranging variability of ataxia, and they all had a wide base stance. Um, and like I said, the rate range of motion of their uh, extremities were certainly widely affected. Uh, didn't find any head tremors, um, and there were no cranial nerve deficits on any of the calves. Uh, a couple had corneal ulcers that I attributed to tra uh, traumatic events, and um, there's no musculoskeletal or peripheral nerve abnormalities uh, detected on the clinical exams. So one calf, this was the calf that I necropsied. I did the full neurologic exam, the, the full small animal type of, that you can actually do on a calf that you can't do on a big calf, of course. Um, but normal riding reflexes, um, you know, hopped them, wheelbarrowed them, um, didn't find anything abnormal there, and no abnormal paniculus on him. And so I decided to euthanize him. And the only thing that I found abnormal was a real small amount of lung consolidation. It was under 10%, so deemed it as not terribly significant and didn't find anything on my clinical exam. That there were no uh, crackles, wheezes, et cetera, indicating se severe uh, lung disease. And no other gross abnormalities detected, and I collected the brain because I was suspecting um, cerebellar disease. Did a few diagnostic tests, um, ruled out them being a uh, PI, persistently infected, um, BVD carrier, did a serum biochemistry, not anything surprising, just the increase in the CK to be expected. Uh, the CBC didn't show anything significant either and the gross necropsy didn't reveal a, a whole lot. So clinical exams on my second visit was three months later for a follow-up, and this was when the owner decided that he wanted to um, harvest three of the calves, so I went to the abattoir and collected the brains, and um, clinical exams weren't anything significantly different from the first time. The one of the corneal ulcers was actually healing quite well, um, and they're still ataxic um, and similar degrees of ataxia. Yeah, and they were all really well muscled, which was quite surprising, much more than we'd expect with, um, I saw pictures of the bull and even with the, the milk and shorthorns calf was really well muscled. Um, the histopath of all four brains, the cerebrum was normal as to be expected because the mentation was normal, didn't expect anything there. Um, but there were lesions in the cerebellums, um, particularly the uvula and the lingua, and multifocally in the uh, Purkinje cell layer um, was abnormal with 20 to 30% of them being gone. And they had the, the classical torpedo-shaped uh, Purkinje cell axons that are characteristic uh, histologically of this condition. And so diagnosis of multifocal um, cerebellar abiotrophy and the granular layer was also abnormal in, in thickness and degeneration of those cells. So conclusions, the history, the clinical exam findings of lo localizing the condition to the cerebellum uh, the histopath to confirm the clinical diagnosis, uh, support the, and the history of one bull 
um, siring all these calves, um, support the diagnosis of bovine familial convulsions, and ataxia. So there's a few interesting points. For some reason, I didn't put it on the slide, but it, it is the, the first, or it has not been reported previously in Australia. So if I get it published, then it'll be the first report. Uh, very high incidence, uh, which is different from previous reports, and the calves seem to be exceptionally well muscled, uh, which hasn't been uh, reported as well. And perhaps it's an under-recognized disease because uh, when I talk to practitioners in, in Australia, they're like, oh yeah, I think I've seen something similar to that. Or an owner says, yeah, I, I had some calves like that, but um, didn't think that they were going to survive anyway, so why call the vet? Um, so I think it's something that we can keep our eyes out for, and maybe if we get enough reports, we can have a, a larger case series and learn more about this condition. So thank you very much. And are there any questions?